Hello, everybody. This meeting will be held in accordance with Executive Order N-2920, issued by California Governor Gavin Newsom on March 17th, 2020. The Ralph M. Brown Act, California Government Code, Section 54950, ET sequence, and the Federal Americans with Disabilities Act. This meeting will be physically open to the public and accessible via Zoom. Zoom meeting information is, was posted on the agenda. Remote public comment is also available for the City Council meeting by emailing the City Clerk at cityclerk at ci.series.ca.us by 5 p.m. The date of the meeting. Include the agenda item number or public comment period in the subject line of the email. The clerk may read, may read comments into the record if specifically requested to do so at the beginning of your email. Your written comment will be distributed to the City Council and kept on file as part of the official record of the City Council. Welcome everybody to the City Council, Monday, August 9th, 2021. And now I'll call this meeting to order. If we can get a roll call, please. Council Member Rhino. Here. Council Member Silvera. Here. Vice Mayor Condit. Here. And Mayor Lopez. Here. We'll begin with the invocation by Pastor Tim Gianosa from Big Valley Grace. <clears throat> Thank you and let us pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, thank you for assembling us here today and thank you for the men and women who serve this city so faithfully. Thank you for their sacrifice and Father, for their willingness to stand in the gap and to stand in leadership. And so Father, we ask that you would give them wisdom and discernment and understanding of what they see and what the decisions they must make. Lord, that they would follow in your footsteps and the teaching and that you say you make it rain upon the evil, the wicked, and the righteous alike. They hold that responsibility as well to administer this city to those that are friend and foe. And so, Lord, give them great wisdom on how to do that. May they see that which they wouldn't naturally see. May they exercise leadership that, may they, that they've learned over the years and they may gain right now. And Father, may they take into account all the citizens and their needs and how best to serve them and to bring forth that which is best for this city. So thank you. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Tim. There is no presentations today. We'll begin with citizens' communications. While the City Council welcomes and encourages participation in the City Council meetings, adopt the rules allow no more than five minutes. Resolution number 2007-106. For expression of non-agenda items, matters under the jurisdiction of the City Council and not on the posted agenda, may be addressed by the general public. However, California law prohibits the city council from taking actions on any matter which is not posted on the agenda, unless it is determined to be an emergency by the city council. Citizens are entitled to address the city council on any agenda item subject to the five minute provision. Do we have anybody in person? Yes, ma'am. Yes, I do. Uh, Dave Pratt, series. Uh, I'm up here are my two pet peeves, uh, traffic signals and the dog park. Um, I know at one time you were talking about turning the traffic lights over to a contractor. Did you ever do that? If not, um, you know, uh, it's probably coming up time that the state mandates where you uh, take traffic control out there and uh, check the speed limit. And I, I respectfully that you decline that. Every time, the main artery, every time you slow it down, you send more people speeding through the neighborhoods. And then when you, you slow it, you slow the traffic. When it takes me uh, 45 minutes to get from, from uh, the airport home on Mitchell Road because of the lights, I was right set up a semi just started to take off and the light turned red on him. So he had to wait an extra turn. As far as the dog park goes, is it's getting muddy and losing the grass again. You gotta quit butchering the lawn. If 
you're going to wind up shutting it down for another couple of months to repair the lawn. Also, your own people, uh, <clears throat> you need to move the garbage cans outside the fence, take them out, of, out and take the, the duty bags and move it to the transition cage. You guys, are, um, when they go to clean that, clean that, is a big dog that won't allow them to get in there to do that, do that so they don't. So move the garbage cans outside, move the duty bags in the transition cage, and quit butchering the lawn. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> we do have two yellow cards, my apologies. Uh, Ms. Kashmir. Okay, let me just take these two yellow cards first and then you gentlemen can come up. Thank you. Okay, no problem, thank you. Hello. Good evening, Council. Good evening. Uh, my agenda today is regarding the United States flag. I feel very intimidated uh, due to the fact that I know there's law, there's rules for everything, for graffiti. Uh, I don't know who's responsible or who should be held responsible when it comes to flags that have been ripped still on the pools, um, especially on Blaker and Hackett. There's three, four houses, not to mention their numbers. I have talked to Congressman Harder's office in regarding this issue. I've also talked to, to the city manager of C Ceres, wanting to know who is responsible as far as going out there citing or telling people, because someone like me as a citizen going out there and telling them that they need to retire their flag. I find it that I can be shot. I can be, you know, I don't know how they're gonna approach me, but I feel as a citizen, it is my right and um, to address this issue about the United States flag that we honor as we just did before the meeting and that we should respect it. But who's to implement these rules? Um, please let me know because I'm very concerned as a citizen. Thank you. Thank you. Go ahead, sir. John Warren, City of Series. Thank you very much, Council Member. Uh, I discovered something today when I was looking at the uh, government app that some of us use on our iPhones to report things to the uh, city of Ceres or to the city of Modesto or to Stanislaus County. Apparently the app series has changed. I tried to use it and um, when it came on my dashboard, my phone, it said I had to refresh it. And what happened was, is I got an entirely different icon that says my series on it now versus the Go app. And it appears neither one of these are working. I talked to the uh, IT guy before meeting and they're gonna check tomorrow. But what I did discover when I was looking through what I could read in the new app, um, there's some headings, you know, government, city council, Parks and Recreation, Police Department, Code Enforcement. I took a look under the City Council and it says that City Council meetings are second and fourth uh, Tuesday and they start at 7 p.m. So what the general public knows is that they can come down here at 7 p.m. and that's when the meeting will start. That hasn't been changed and updated. When I looked at the members of the city council, I find that only Linda here, Miss Rhino, is listed as members of our city council. Ken Lane is still a member. Chris Vieira is still a member. Mr. Drossett is still a member. And Mr. Klein is still a member. With all of their information on how to contact members of the city. When I looked under the <clears throat> little frequently asked questions section. There was a part about 
noise enforcement. So knowing that Mr. Yeagley is concerned about how the city addressed noise, I kind of peeked at that. And it says that the uh, city of Ceres encourages members who want to use loud systems to have parties in their yard, that they should go around and notify all their neighbors that they're gonna do this. And if there's a problem with the noise, then maybe the person generating it should lower the volume. Why would the city advertise and encourage people to use sound systems at their parties after they notify their neighbors that they're gonna be noisy? It goes on to say further that noise enforcement is more enforceable between the hours of 10 p.m. and 7 a.m., which basically tells the folks, hey, prior to 10 p.m., have at it. And there's been a lot of discussions with this council and other councils in regards to that 10 p.m., 7 a.m. thing, especially when we were redoing the ordinance. I encourage each of you members of the council to please read what's being written about our city and what the citizens are reading and understand how we operate. It is not proper to encourage people to violate the law, but in violation of our municipal codes. That exactly is what happens. Please correct what the people read about our city on that website when you investigate it tomorrow to find out why it's not working properly. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Osgood. Councilmember Ryan, would you like to respond? Mr. Warren, which app did you say you found the discrepancies in? Was it Ask Theories or Government Outreach? It's the brand new app that the city just put on in place of the one that was there before. There's a Go app that you report to the city any discrepancies that you might see as you're traveling around. That Go app was updated to the garbage that I just told you about. Thank you. Mr. Osgood, thank you for your patience. Um, good evening. A uh, couple things that concern me this evening. First one, what actually started concerning me when Chief Ernst posted a blog in the city of Modesto's uh, internet options there, said that we merged with Modesto Fire. Words are important. The words we use and their definitions are important. It's our understanding as citizens that we have a contract for service with the city of Modesto, not a merger. They're two very different things. When we have these meetings and we vote on things, we're voting on technicalities. We're not voting on, well, it could be considered a merger. It's either a merger or it's not. He either owns our fire department or we have a partnership and a contract for service, not a merger. It's very important how we speak publicly because that's not what our council voted on was not a merger, it was a contract for service. If we have a merger, then we need to readdress the issue because we still haven't came back before this board, this council to address municipal code issues that may be related to that contract. Talk to some council members and they think that that was going to be the situation. It hasn't happened yet. Staying on that same issue of the fire, we have a closed session negotiations this evening in the current agenda. It lists the Series Professional Firefighters Association. In the contract and the vote that the city of Modesto had, there was a Modesto City Fire Fighters Association. Memorandum of Understanding, where our employees at the Ceres Fire Department became employees of the city of Modesto. If this is a typo, well, then we need to address that in future uh, agenda closed session items. If it's not, then I ask, why do we still have a Ceres Professional Firefighters Association when there are no Ceres Professional Firefighters? In my view, our municipal code says the city of Ceres establishes a fire department for the benefit of Ceres. 
if we're contracted out to Modesto and it's actually a merger, we have no fire department. We need to address that municipal code immediately where we're operating outside of the rules that we as a city set for ourselves. That's all I have this evening. Thank you, Mr. Osgood. <clears throat> Any other members of the public? Thank you, sir. Please state your name. Richard, thank you for joining us. I've been in uh, front of Tom Westbrook a few times in regards- If you could please move the microphone right in front of you, sir. Move the microphone in front of you so we can hear you. you. No, in front of you, sir, so I can hear you. Sorry about that. Can you hear me now? You can get a little bit closer to the mic. That'd be great. Thank you. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> I have property, industrial property uh, that backs up to K&D Enterprises, the uh, rock crushing plant. I have complaints with uh, Cal OSHA, Air Resource Board, and one of the... Um, contamination poison control over the uh, silica dust that is being made from the concrete product that they're crushing over there. Um, I got a permit, copy of the permit, it's 20 years old and they are not in compliance at all. They have Cal Crush running a crusher over there and they aren't even on the permit. The permit is under Santa Fe Gravel Incorporated, and they haven't been out there for over 20 years. Um, why these people have not been stopped, um, I have given, I dropped off at the city for you, Mr. Lopez, for the city council, and for Mr. Westbrook. Same paperwork I had sent him over a week ago, plus another explanation of what's going on over there. I know you can't do anything today or what have you. I just want to make sure that this complaint is now in front of the city. And there's a lot of things that need to be addressed over there that they're not doing in compliance with the permit. Thank you for Thank your you, Richard. time. Appreciate it. Okay, so it came in a yellow envelope, the sections, I gave one to you, okay. a yellow envelope, one to the city council, and also one to uh, Tom Westbrook. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Mr. Westbrook, if you could please look, at, look into that and then get back to the council when you get an opportunity. Yeah, the city clerk <clears throat> has scanned that, those documents and emailed to the council um, already today. Okay, I appreciate that. Thank you. Do we have any other members of the public that would like to speak? Do we have anybody on Zoom? We have two hands. Oh, I'm sorry, we did not see you. Go ahead, sir. You hear me? I don't really know how this works. Uh, you have five minutes and you can take a look at that clock there, sir. All right, Welcome so I just want to address this look right here. I serve my country. I love my flag. I know that sometimes the flag, when it's poured out, some people might, you know, take it and shoot it. But I do know that a lot of my brothers and sisters I served with, some of them had that flag in their family two or three generations. It would be wrong for me or any American to ask them to retire said flag in that case. I mean, I don't know the predicaments. One, I've been all over this country. I'm not afraid to knock on anyone's door. <laughs> you know, so I don't know why anyone would be afraid to knock on my door. I believe in flying that flag with pride and honor. And I believe that there are times to decommission a flag. I mean, I served in Swineford, Germany. I lived in Nazi barracks in that country. I mean, the SWAT sticker was still edged on the concrete. I served that, but I served with pride. That flag never touched the ground. So I do know what it's like to want to keep that flag, you know, shining. But at the same time, I could never ask brothers or sisters to be, deny them the right to fly one of their flags in one of our, in one of our cities, anywhere in the United States. Just like to remind everyone that we're all American. We all fly that flag. So I just I think it'd be wrong for series to ask anyone to take down their flag, no matter what it is, you know, because we are not a communist country. We're not a socialist country. We're American. It's a country of freedom, free men and women, kings and queens, not peasants. So I just ask series not to take anyone's flag. What was your name, sir? Todd Underwood. 
Thank you for your service. Thank you, sir. Was there anybody else in the public? Okay, so let's go ahead and go to Zoom, please. First person is Steve Brandt. Mr. Brandt, I'll unmute your mic. Mic is unmuted. Okay, thank you. Good evening, Council. Uh, we have been gone. We left July 1 because I wanted to avoid all the loud booming and the fireworks going off. And apparently it just carried on as normal, even though the fine has been doubled or whatever, tripled, you know, and I understand that there have been a few that were caught. Uh, but I just wanted to say how relaxing it was to be able to celebrate you know, our country on uh, July 4th without having to worry about, you know, fires or booms or anything like that. Uh, it was a very relaxing time. Uh, I would like to, uh, when we came back, I was just kind of taken back by the resignation of Tom Westbrook. Tom, I wish you the very best. We talked the other night and good luck to you and you're a very smart man. Uh, I also uh, attended the National Night Out, and I would like to thank Council Person Linda and her husband for supplying hot dogs. And there was just, it was just nice to have the camaraderie, I guess, you know, between the police department and the citizens. Uh, I would have liked to see more people there. But that was fine, you know, at least it was something. Uh, and that's all I really have to say for now. Uh, good luck, Council. Uh, those of us in District 1, please fill out your ballot. We received ours yesterday, and we have voted for the most experienced person. Thank you very much, and have a blessed day. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Next person is Dean Yakely. Mr. Yakely, I'll unmute your mic. Yes, good evening, City Council. Uh, yeah, I just want to get back to something I mentioned many times before and a few months back uh, because of, uh, uh, well, um, before I go there, I want to thank those two individuals who got up and talked about the patriotism uh, either way that they viewed it, but it was great to hear somebody talk about being patriots in, in series, let alone America. And uh, uh, I want to thank John Warren, too, for explaining uh, the new section that he found uh, on the code enforcement about noise complaints. And I want to let Linda Rhino know that uh, I sent her the, the directions on how to find that. Okay, so I want to know from talking to the council before about uh, the noise ordinance, which I know you guys, uh, at least Linda's heard it many times over the rest of you probably haven't, but through many years now. And I talked to the chief about this too, Chief Collins, and I would like to know when they go out to these calls, why aren't they, you know, and I'm just beating my head against the wall, why aren't they or are they already uh, printing out the noise ordinance and handing it to the individual's homeowner or renters that they go to with these, when there's a complaint for a call that they don't give it to them in either English or Spanish. You know, I know I did mention before, there's other people that speak different languages, but predominant languages here are English and Spanish. So, I've tested this myself, you know, on a printer that's not elaborate like probably the city, but you can get the the uh, uh, the whole noise ordinance on on one piece of paper if you have a, a printer that can print both sides. So you can have virtually two pieces of paper with English on one paper for the whole complete noise ordinance, and you can have one with Spanish with the whole noise ordinance in it. 
and officer can underline it or whatever. It could be pre-underlined from the city and, you know, then printed out through their printers. And I just, you know, we got to get to these people. It's still being conducted. And what, what uh, uh, John Warren read recently or just tonight on, on this noise ordinance through the court enforcement reevaluation of whatever they printed, it, it does not make any common sense at all. And I think that we as citizens, uh, Americans, wherever we live, there's a lack of common sense. We were all born with that, you know, whether our parents taught us or not, we learned some common sense somewhere, but common sense isn't so common when a lot of things are going on. And we need to put these people in a different path and by trying to educate them more when there's an issue, if they can't understand, somebody surely can read something to them in their own language or translate something. So we need to put and address this a little bit more. And I just, you know, I want some more output instead of me being input. And I want to find out why we can't take an officer out and put some of these in his briefcase or whatever he carries to his job with all his equipment and, and everything where he has access to give the, the violator of a noise ordinance, whether it's lawnmowers at nine o'clock at night in my neighborhood or somebody cutting tile at nine and 10 o'clock at night that they can give them a copy of the ordinance. All right, thank you. Thank you very much. Anybody else with their hands raised? City Clerk? Do we have any emails? We'll now close the public comment section. <clears throat> there is no appointments. Anybody declare any conflict of interest? Okay, moving on to the consent calendar. All matters listed on the consent calendar are considered routine in nature and will be enacted by a single motion unless otherwise requested by an individual council member or public for special consideration. Otherwise, the recommendation of staff will be accepted and acted upon by a roll call vote. Is there anyone in the, count, in the council that would like to consent item pulled for further discussion? Move to approve the consent calendar as written. Wait, we do that. They haven't asked uh, the public yet. There is apology. Uh, no problem. There is one member of the public who would like to pull item number four. Move to approve the consent calendar without number four. Second. We get a roll call. Council Member Rhino. Yes. Council Member Silvera. Yes. Vice Mayor Condit. Aye. And Mayor Lopez. Aye. Ocean passes four zero. Thank you. Item number four, register of audit, audited demands for period covering July 21st, 2021 through July 28th. Mr. Osgood. Well, it's pretty unorthodox, but I'm probably the most unorthodox member of the community. I actually go through there and look at those things. A couple of things stand out to me. We have a few line items where we're paying association dues for certain members, be it uh, reserve officers, uh, Chief of Police's Association, these kinds of things. Uh, one particular thing bothers me. I don't require these men or women in my employ to be members of any extra ordinary or extracurricular associations. It doesn't bother me what City of Modesto does, City of Turlock, or all the Chief of Police in the several jurisdictions in California, how they feel together. It bothers me how my chief feels. Uh, so there with those types of associations, I think that's a personal deal unless we're under contract to provide that service to the employee. Uh, There's some, some areas where we're boarding canine dogs, uh, police officers. Uh, $450 seems to be a lot to, to board a dog. Uh, it was my understanding, and I may be wrong, that these animals reside with their handler. If we're short a handler and we need a safe place for the animal, that's fine. Uh, another deal, the thing that really, really bothers me, and I'll use the employee's name because it's a line item, 
Mr. Sanchez, for, for some unknown reason, didn't turn in his work uniform. That's costing the city $250. It would be my hope that the, that the, the finance department at Sturies, prior to giving Mr. Sanchez his final check, made him pay for that. It's not my job to cover his uniforms. I just think we need to be more diligent at looking at this. Every two weeks we come here and we pass this, uh, pass this unanimously, uh, you know, 800 plus thousand dollars. And in today's, today's world, every dollar counts. Some of these dollars may have provided us our own fire department. all I got to say. We just need to be real picky about what we're saying. Yeah, go ahead and pay. Go ahead and pay. Go ahead and pay because it all adds up. Thank you, Mr. Osgood. No comments from the council? Get a motion. Move to approve number four in the consent calendar. Second. Roll call, please. Council Member Rhino. Yes. Council Member Silvera. Yes. Vice Mayor Condit. Aye. And Mayor Lopez. Aye. Motion passes 4 0. Now moving on to public hearing. Item number seven public hearing to consider resolution number 2021 55, adopting the annual budget for the city of Ceres for 2021 2022 official, official year, approving positions for official year 2021 2022, and resolution number 2021 56, adopting appropriations limitations for official year 2021 and 2022. Thank you, Mayor Lopez, uh, Council Member follows your meeting of uh, June 30th, where um, we adopted a continuing resolution that gave us 60 days worth of uh, um, revenues and expenditures to pay our bills moving forward. <clears throat> at that meeting on June 30th, the council provided direction to um, look at, kind of take another look at the existing budget and to uh, eliminate the structural deficit, which was about $1.6 million. Um, since that meeting on June 30th, staff has um, sat down with uh, various department heads, finance director, et cetera, and we've come up with a list to kind of show um, eliminating that $1.6 million in debt um, over a number of uh, different issues to make up that amount. And so before you then tonight is, is really two resolutions. There's 20, um, 2155A and B. Um, 2155A was the budget just as it was presented to you on June 14th. Um, B um, shows those reductions. And essentially, those reductions, and I'll get to them uh, here in just a half second. So this is from the staff report, and this is an attachment or exhibit to uh, resolution 2155B. And so what it suggests is um, eliminating a number of positions. Um, some of these positions were new positions. Um, uh, some of them were um, items where we just had unfilled positions over the last month. Uh, we removed some funds for a tree grid pruning system. And what you see on this list total um, gets to about $1.6 million. It essentially takes that structural deficit that was um, initially proposed in the budget on June 14th and eliminates it. <clears throat> um, one of the things that we've done since this time uh, is with the uh, getting into the contract for services with the city of Modesto, there was also some immediate savings as a result of that. And so what I'm going to put on the screen now is the what's familiar to the council is that five-year projection um, which shows kind of what we ended in last year and kind of as we move forward. So let me bring that up so that we can talk about it quickly. And so this is the five-year projection. So the column highlighted in yellow, that's where um, we are in the current fiscal year. Um, the very top line is the budgetary balance. What's included in our reserves is 6.9 million. 
you can see as you move down in that column, these are the revenues that we expect to receive this year. Um, the important one to note is um, the last line just directly above the 25 million is a line um, for the American Rescue Plan Act funds. Um, the council hasn't allocated any of those. None of them have been included at this point. As you move down the list, um, you can see uh, that the, the primary thing that's changed over the year um, is the salaries. And so near the bottom of this page down in this area, we've included the cost for the fire, uh, fire contract for the services with Modesto. That cost is about 4.6 million. And so that reduced our salaries, our retirement, and some of the other costs associated with workman's comp. The result of that is we made about $500,000 in savings. So I showed you exhibit A, which listed 1.6 million. When we included the fire regionalization contract, we saved about another um, 500,000. And so essentially what you see at the very bottom is that the revenue projection, and this is without the use of any ARA funds, exceeds the expenditure in the general fund. Um, so we have a $25 million projection for revenue and a $24.5 million of expenditures. So essentially at the very bottom, what we have is that there's potential to add uh, just shy of $500,000 to the reserves in this, uh, in this fiscal year. And so what that shows is it shows an overall uh, percentage of 30% of the general fund is in reserves. Um, <clears throat> so noting that the council may want to consider looking at that exhibit um, listed as exhibit A and perhaps not utilizing all of those cuts, but perhaps adding a few of those positions in or some other things that kind of total that 500,000 amount and then essentially we would be um, not taking any money from reserves and we would have a balanced budget. That would drop your percentage of um, reserves to about 27% from the 30, uh, but that would be the result of that. Um, and at this point in time, I'm available for any questions that the council may have. Vice Mayor. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, city manager and finance director and the whole city staff, I first want to thank all of you for bringing this back to the council with these cuts uh, to see a balanced budget. Uh, I do want to ask about uh, items that are potentially uh, to be cut first, the street grid pruning. Um, what would that entail and what would our residents be losing out on uh, if we did cut that? Yeah, I'm going to pass that to uh, Public Works Director Damas. So over the last what eight, nine years now, we've had a grid prune program in place where we've only actually made it through two full cycles of the five. What that would mean was, is we would just postpone it a year again. That's what we've done in the past. Um, the residents would be missing out is, is that you know our emergency trim work has gone from 75,000 in expenditures. Uh, we came at mid-year budget asking for another 50,000 to get us through the emergency work. Um, and we see that number increasing. We had. Uh, three calls, emergency calls just over this last weekend for tree limbs breaking. What happens with the drought is, is the trees are looking for moisture. When they can't find it, they're getting heavy and they, just, they start breaking. Without the grid prune program, we can't relieve any of the weight on the trees and or trim the tree accordingly, structurally make it sound, so therefore they start breaking. And to be clear, you said we've had this program for eight years? It's, it's been eight to 10 in total. Um, we've only gotten through two cycles of the five cycles that we established. So we've never made it through the city in a decade. Correct. So would you say that this program currently for the last decade has been underfunded? Oh, absolutely. And while I'm talking to you, Director, uh, I do want to ask you about the fleet allocation and the reduction there. How would that impact uh, the parks maintenance staff? Um, well, honestly, I mean, right now being shorthanded as it is, you know, we only have five park maintenance workers where, you know, we should be up in the eight range, eight to nine, um, without the, the fleet allocation, the fleet allocation provides 
um, equipment, whether it be replaced or new additional equipment to help them be a little more efficient and get the job done. So without that allocation, it would set us back a little bit. Well, how, how is their equipment currently? Is it up to standard or? Yeah, so all the equipment's up to standard. Fleet maintains all of our equipment. Anytime anything needs to be repaired, what we do is we have everything, we have all of our equipment on replacement cycles so that over a certain amount of years, we've replaced that piece of equipment before we start really spending money for you know, large repairs. That's what this is. So one of the, the expenditures in there is a mower for River Bluff um, that'll help mow the soccer fields, that'll help everybody out there playing soccer because we get a lot of uh, complaints because the grass is too tall. That's one of the pieces of equipment. We've got some chainsaws, some pole saws. Um, if we were to reduce the, the tree trim budget, um, we're obviously gonna need the saws to move the tree limbs as they break. Thank you for your clarification. Chief, I'm gonna turn it over to you now uh, and ask you about the fleet allocation for PD and how that would affect the department. Just making sure it's on. Um, it would have an impact on us. Um, we're not unfamiliar with this approach. We used to change out our vehicles at 80,000 miles. Uh, when money got tight before, we ran up to 120,000 miles. I think we're back down to 80, 85,000 miles on an exchange. We would have to run those to about 100,000 miles before we switch out cars. In the event that one of our units was totaled, we'd have to come before council and ask for a budget amendment to replace that vehicle. And with the reduction in overtime, how would that impact uh, the department? Well, that's, that's a big unknown because uh, so many factors go into our overtime. Obviously, we try to manage it as best we can, but a number of factors come into play with uh, large investigations or if we have a lot of people out on uh, IOD, we'll have to replace those shifts, which will have an impact on our overtime budget. Again, like with the vehicle, if uh, we get to a point to where we're running out of money, we'll come back before the council and ask for a budget amendment. Thank you for the clarification, Chief. Moreno. I have a question for the chief as well. We currently fully staffed with police officers. Uh, currently, we are down one officer and fingers crossed, toes crossed, uh, that we'll be fully staffed by mid-September. And then we are fully staffed. Overtime costs would go down. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. I do want to clarify that although on paper we are fully staffed, we have a number of officers out on injury. Thank you. I guess it's my turn. I have a, a few things to say, a few ideas. Um, looking at the exhibit A, knowing basically that we have, it sounds like $500,000 to work with to take some, scratch some things off this exhibit A list um, and still have a balanced budget, which is exciting. We talk about code enforcement every single meeting and we seem like we pawn a lot of stuff on code enforcement. I would honestly, I would hate to see that be part of this list. Also the two parts maintenance workers, like Jeremy said, they're short staffed all the time um, as it is. And to take those two off would be a huge hit. And speaking of the overtime, the police overtime, I believe we're at four fifty, five hundred thousand dollars a year normal in overtime. So if we just took an average year, maybe we get full staffed, and it's three hundred fifty thousand. It looks like mid-year we'll probably be coming back with a budget adjustment request if we were to to continue to leave this reduced two hundred twenty-one thousand seven hundred dollars in there. So the way I look at it with my calculations. If we scratch the code enforcement officer, the two parks maintenance workers and the reduced overtime budget for the police, that would be $503,610. We have a projected savings of 507,000 because of the fire contract savings. So that would actually leave us with an extra three, almost $4,000. Those positions out of all of this, I think are vital 
and also the overtime budget for the police just going to end up coming back to us for more money. So I think we could we could ratify this contract, this budget, and scratch those things off Exhibit A. We would still be within our way over our normal reserve target of 18% at 27%. And we would move forward with a budget and, and start doing real city business. So that's my that's my idea to take off the code enforcement off the list, the two park workers, the police overtime, and save that five hundred thousand dollars that um, in the budget that we're going to save from the fire contract. Are, am I off base, Mr. Westbrook, or are those numbers pretty close to, that I was? Uh, I think your numbers are right, right, very close. Thank you. <clears throat> Council member, right? Well, I can see adding back some of those items that are in exhibit A. I don't believe that we should spend 500,000 because then we're gonna get into the situation again where we don't have a truly balanced budget, especially when, if you look at closed session tonight, we have negotiations for all of our bargaining units coming up. So I, I don't think we should spend 500,000 and zero out our amount of reserves. It wouldn't zero, they'd still be 27% and we would have a structurally sound budget. And we were able to keep all those, those positions that are vital to, uh, to everybody here in our city. It would be structurally budgeted or, or structurally balanced, but it's still, and we're, we would have 27%, but we're gonna wind up spending more than the 496,000 that it looks like we're ahead. We start doing negotiation. So to, to save all those positions that I spoke of in exhibit A, it would take our reserves from only from 30% currently to 27%. So to save those positions and, and not have to go and revisit this police overtime budget in three or four or five months, and it would only reduce our reserves by 3%, I think I can't see any reason why we wouldn't do those. Uh, one of the things the council may wish to consider, um, direction provided to staff um, did not include those ERA funds um, initially. Uh, we do have them receive them on the 13th of July. They really haven't been accounted for in the budget just yet. Um, so there's going to be about $4.3 million that the council will have access to allocate into the budget moving forward. <clears throat> council Member Rhino. But I think it's, it's good that we're not including those because we haven't even had a discussion of how we're going to spend them. So we should not be showing them in the budget. And you know, it can't go just into the general fund. So I don't even consider those that our money yet. So we've had the discussion of how we can spend it and how we want to spend it. Mr. Westbrook, that money is in our account? Yeah, the money has been in our account since the 13th of July. So it's our money, all right. I agree with Ms. Rhino that those our funds shouldn't be considered in this budget as of as it's written now, and we're looking at approving or not approving. Um, we we came the city, like Cooper said, came back with a balanced budget. Thank you for all your work on that. I think we can save some vital people and some vital employees and programs by taking advantage of that five hundred thousand dollars in savings from the fire contract, and still have a balanced budget and move forward with what. We're going to do later with negotiations and the stimulus fund. So this is right sitting right where we wanted to be sitting. After that, we said no to the budget. Um, I think we just need to move forward with this, save those vital positions, and start talking about the, the stimulus fund after the fact. Council Member Reiner. Mr. Westbrook, can't we approve the budget with this 30.4% and then do our negotiations and then come back and decide that we want to add new positions? We should take care of our own employees before we're adding additional employees. Yes, that's an option to the council. Um, 
you can certainly do that. Uh, most likely moving into the new year, you're going to have to bring, um, or the fiscal year, you're going to have to bring back budget amendments anyway. Um, so you could certainly elect to do that at that time after you've concluded negotiations. Well, that would be the direction I would like to go. Mayor. I have some additional questions for uh, city staff. First, I want to start off with uh, Chief Collins. Chief, does our uh, police department or many police departments for that matter have trouble uh, attracting new officers uh, that are under the PEPRA retirement plan? Yes, and they're having problems attracting police officers, period. And uh, just a little background on PEPRA for those who don't know what that is. Can you provide that, that detail on what PEPRA is and how it impacts new officers? Yeah, I'll just make it really simple. They have to pay more of their retirement costs. Uh, anybody hired after 2013 has to pay more of their retirement costs. Now, if I could get into the details of the department a little bit, uh, would you off the top of your head know the average response time to a call? For non-emergency, it's about 13 minutes. For emergency, it's about four minutes. And would you know our average daily call volume? We do about 246 calls per day. And how many officers on staff a day? We start, when we're fully staffed, we have four officers per shift. We have three shifts, day shift, swing shift, and graveyard. So in the morning time, we have four officers on patrol. There's an overlap. We have eight officers, and then there's another overlap between swings and graveyards. Would you have any examples on how our, uh, how our police department is a proactive police department? Well, based on the stats, we're proactive about 30% of the time that we're out in service. Uh, more specific, we are very uh, proactive when it comes to DUI investigations and traffic enforcement. Um, Give me, I can't remember all of this information, so I did take some notes. That's all right, Chief. Uh, on traffic enforcement, uh, what's the makeup of our traffic unit? Currently, we have one full-time traffic officer, two reserve traffic officers, and a traffic sergeant who just started a couple weeks ago. Thank you, Chief. Um, now I'd like to turn it over to the finance director and it'll be simple questions um, related to the development agreement money with marijuana companies. And I know I've touched on this a lot, uh, but I wanna bring it up again because PEPRA is an important issue uh, for recruiting and keeping new officers. Uh, Finance Director, I just want to read off the numbers that we've talked about. Uh, currently, out of that funding breakdown, the police department receives $730,000. 25% of it uh, also goes to fire, or did go to fire for $365,000. And there was a remainder of 25%, $365,000 that goes to administration, correct? Correct. And now, if this council decided to fix uh, the PEPRA formula for POA members, for police officers, that would cost the city 
$355,000, correct? Correct. I, I think it's of utmost importance that this council do everything in its ability to keep, retain, and attract new police officers, especially when we're in a competitive market. Uh, again, I think we should designate this money, the other 25% that's currently being spent on administration, to fixing PEPRA. Mr. Westbrook, I'd like to turn it back to you, ask you what our job to housing ratio is. I'm gonna tax my memory, Vice Mayor. I think it's 0. 0.67 to one <clears throat> currently. Thank you, that, that was the number you sent me, uh, 0. 0.63. So that means uh, for every half, half a job it's a house or correct so for every half a job we have one house which in our city the you know quarters are what 5.5 .5 living in a home i think off the top of my head i don't know if that's the number from the department of finance uh, but we do have about thirteen thousand dwelling units within the city we're we're a little behind for a city our size, correct? Or are we where we should be averaged out for a job to housing ratio? Generally, cities like to be at about one to one. Um, I think with our general plan update that we adopted, and some of the uh, the development that will ultimately come in terms of additional industrial and commercial developments, we're actually going to exceed the jobs by one point three two to one. So we're slowly, as we move forward in that general plan, we'll increase the number of jobs over the number of households. Thank you for the clarification. I have no further questions at this time. Thank you. What is the city council's wishes then? You you want to open the public hearing, Mayor Lopez? That, there's no more questions. Okay. Yes, we will open up the public hearing now. Anybody in the chambers that would like to speak on this matter? Mr. Osgood. Just me again. So sure. we have a a director here that tells us we got a grid printing program we've never been able to fully complete. So well, my question is, what kind of liability are we at at the city with these trees that could fall on someone's vehicle, someone's home, someone's person? My man can't keep my trees maintained. And we he hasn't been able to be funded fully to do that in how many years? Ten years, you said? I mean, I'm going to call him when I think he's doing wrong, but I think the, the councils in the past and this council, if we cut that, we're hurting my man. I need him to do a job for me. And I don't care where the money comes from, but we need to be able to get through the grid pruning. We need to be able to, to have these things not be liabilities. Liability is going to cost us more than the savings cutting it out of the budget, regardless of if we go to the risk pool or not. I mean, in the long run, that hurts us not to complete these projects. As far as police cars, 80 to 100,000 miles, I wish I could turn my car 80 to 100,000 miles. Knowing a little something about building engines, I know those cars will go more than 80. If they physically will not hold up, then let's talk to the guys operating the vehicles about how they're operating the vehicle. My semi-truck lasts a million miles plus, but I maintain it. I drive it sanely. I understand all situations. That's not possible, but I think we can get more than 80,000 miles out of a vehicle with the fully roller motor. It happens all the time. We do it as citizens, and the officers do it in the cars they drive. I just don't want to see us turning cars too soon. I don't want to see us putting our, our director of public works at a deficit 
and that deficit causing us liability in the long run. He needs to be able to service our trees. We haven't been able to in 10 years. Let's not cut the money he was expecting to do what little he could do with. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Osgood. Any other members of the public? John Warren, City of Syria. Um, I have a couple of questions. We talked about the budget. Um, I understand the 1.6, looking at Exhibit A. A little hard to read, maybe my eyeballs aren't focused with the distance we are back here with the screen. So I'm assuming that the information that was provided to the general public uh, online that was posted is, is the correct information we're talking about, Mr. Tom. It says Exhibit A and it lists all the stuff here. 1.692 or, oh my gosh, but anyway, on the page after that, information that was posted on the website, uh, item eight, the very last page, it says, be it resolved by the city council or the city of Ceres, blah, 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 that the uh, appropriate funds is going to be 73 million and some change. And when I looked at 55A and 55B, they're talking about 86 million and 84 million. Now I know 1.6 minus those two numbers don't add up to 73 or 74 million. So I'm asking what the discrepancy is here. I don't understand it. Maybe I'm not the sharpest person in the box but I can add and subtract what information is provided on the website and it doesn't seem to be adding up. Can you explain that please? Mr. Osgood, I, or sorry, Mr. Warren. Okay. Um, I believe you're, you're looking at resolution 2021-56. Is the resolution after that? Well, I'm, I'm looking at the one that says $73 million. Right, is and that calcu is calculated on Exhibit A. Correct, and that has. So to when do... I add the two together, I don't get eighty six or eighty four and fifty five A or fifty five B. No, this is a calculation that we have to do um, in, for our uh, appropriations limit, and that's the limit that we calculated. That has nothing to do with our budget. So what's the budget? What amount here are we talking about for the budget? What's based upon Exhibit A, 73 million, that's not the budget figure? No, that's a calculated amount based on um, what says that? the Department of Finance, our population. It says the adjusted base for fiscal year has been calculated is on Exhibit A. So how much are we gonna spend, 73 million or 86 million? Or 84 million. No, the, the 73 million is based on a base year start, that started back in 1978. And it's a calculation that's done on that amount every year. That's not what it says. It says July 1, 2021, and ending June 30th, 2022. It doesn't say anything about 1978. The, the exhibit A, the calculation does. Not what it says. Exhibit A is the, uh, what the cuts are to this proposed budget. Oh, no. I'm Are you, what page? I'm oh, sorry. Put it up there, Exhibit A. Had all the money, 1.692488. That's the deductions to make the balance the budget. Ms. Diaz, I, I, I think. right off her website. I think he's looking at 2021-55B, where it says total appropriations. And then he's looking at the other 2021-56. Right. That's the, that's the next one. 55A is 86 million, 55B is 84 million. And then the very last page says, the budget's gonna be 73 million. That's the way I understand it. Based upon the 1.6 that was subtracted from one of these two. 
exhibit A is how much money has been taken out of the budget to save, but Mr. Conant asked the council the staff to bring back. So if I subtract 1.6 from 86 or 84, matter of fact, when I minus those two, 55A and 55B, I came up with 1,527,487, which is not the figure over here, 1.6. But none of the figures added, subtracted the way I The reason that last figure doesn't problem. match. Sorry. The reason that last figure doesn't match, Mr. Warren, is because the um, 125,000 from the general fund is transferred into Measure H. That's why there's a discrepancy of 125,000. Nothing in here explains that or presented to the public that we could read in the staff report online. The other thing that I wanted to kind of touch on, my time might have been using me on that, is that I know the state of California, their highway patrol cars, well over 85,000 miles. Maintenance is based on generally a cost versus value basis. When a vehicle becomes more costly than the value of it, then the consideration is generally done. Years ago, we replaced them at 75,000 as a general rule. And that went out the window a long time ago. I think the city of Ceres might be a little bit behind the ball game in the replacement of their fleet just to set a mileage goal uh, and saying, hey, it's time to send it down the road might not be the best way to go uh, with that. Also in the overtime department, I don't know how much consideration is given to something called CTO, comp time off. Sometimes there becomes a necessity to not pay an employee cash, but you give them some CTO time that they can use down the road, which eliminates dollars and cents in the budget. Just some things to be considered. Thank you very much, Council. Thank you, Mr. Warren. Any other members from the public who would like to speak? Go ahead, sir. I have to agree with these guys when it comes to how much money we're spending on vehicles. I mean, I'm sure you guys all, if you haven't served, I'm sure you see a lot of vehicles you use. Military. I mean, they're ragtag. And I get it, you're not gonna get any cops if, you, if your vehicle's falling apart, I totally get that. But there's a lot better ways we could do this. I think one, like they said, drive them a lot longer until they need it. Or two, I would like to ask, would your cops rather have the money that we save on those cars in their pocket, or would they rather have a new car? I mean, cause I think we could do better. If you wanna bring officers in, I know as a soldier, you wanna bring us in, give us a reason to come in. You know what I mean? If you save that money, to put it towards better paychecks for the officers. I mean, if those cars are still running, why not give the money to the officers that are serving this state or the city, I should say, and give them a reason to want to be here. I mean, you save money there because the vehicles are still going and the cops got a better paycheck, you know, something that soldiers never get. You know, I mean, we never get a better paycheck. We just get what's handed to us. But I mean, I'm sure a lot of your officers probably like a better paycheck, right, than a brand new car if they didn't need it. Why aren't we doing stuff like that? I mean, these guys, these guys serve every day. No, I don't have a problem helping law enforcement or, or firefighters out. These are people that we need, you know? These aren't the lady at McDonald's making sure my fries are warm. I mean, these are people we need. But why aren't we just saying, how can we save money by transferring it from one thing to another? If we're gonna spend it, why don't we spend it smarter on the people, you know? If the vehicle's there, give them incentive to keep that money. That's all I got. Thank you. So just to clarify, vehicles that we manage in the Public Works Department, there's 600 of them across the city. None of the vehicles get replaced just because they need to be replaced. So, you know, when the chief says that we're taking the life of the vehicles for patrol cars to seven years, what that really means is eight to 10 now because it takes us two years. It's taken us 18 months right now to get a police rated vehicle from the date of order. So nothing gets replaced. We do everything we can to keep all the vehicles in service until there comes a time where we just can't do any repairs on those vehicles. We're still repairing some of the Crown Vicks. 
we've got two of them in the shop. There was one in the shop yesterday and Crown Vicks, we haven't ordered any Crown Vicks in 10 years. So just, just to clarify. Thank you. More members of the public that would like to speak. Mayor, I Chief. did want to make another clarification. Uh, the difference between the police vehicles and any other vehicle in the fleet is that we run these vehicles 24 seven. They're constantly under stress and strain and wear and tear. They don't have eight, 12, 15, 16 hours to rest. They're, we are 24 seven operation and they're constantly running. That is the difference. Out of state, my truck don't stop. It don't shut off. It don't shut off Mr. six Mr. days Mr. at Warren. a time. Mr. Warren. My bad. I mean to call you. Mr. Osgood, you've already had your time to speak. I do appreciate you wanted to. Okay, we just need to be cognizant of that. I mean, if we're going to use that, the discussion needs to be legitimate. These trucks, they don't shut off. I understand those cars, they get driven hard. But what we're saying is, uh, I'm saying allocate Mr. these Osgood. guys their funds, but we can utilize that equipment longer. Thank you, Mr. Osgood. Not an excuse. Anybody on Zoom? <clears throat> no more comments. Public hearing is now closed. But we'll discuss this matter further. Vice Mayor. Thank you, Mayor. I would like to point out uh, that our city's general plan does uh, set goals, set priorities for this council to budget. Uh, such as the 1.3 officers per thousand goal that we have in our general plan. Also, we have uh, numerous goals related to the Tuolumne River Regional Partnership uh, that Ms. Brandy Meyer brought up earlier this year. Now, I understand we have uh, constrained resources, limited resources. Uh, there's no silver bullet. There's no uh, crystal ball for a solution. These are trade-offs. Um, I appreciate Councilman Silvera's suggestion uh, to bring in some of those uh, cuts that are on the table. Um, having said that, uh, I would probably lean towards uh, Mr. Osgood's suggestion of the street grid pruning, uh, that we haven't made it through in a decade. Uh, I think that's a very, uh, or statement on a, on the council and uh, where we've been at for the last 10 years. Uh, and of course, I am gonna make a uh, motion at the appropriate time uh, to use that $365,000 to fix PEPRA for our police officers that are under that uh, rule. And I hope to have a second at that time. Councilman Brino. Is the discussion on PEPRA, is that considered negotiations? City attorney. You could, if you make it, if you put it in the budget, then you would go back and negotiate. It would be a perfunctory thing. So, Council, what are the suggestions we have? Two suggestions we have. Did we have a from the vice mayor? I think he said he was going to. Uh, yeah, I'll make a motion if there's no more discussion. No, I thought you already had. Or no, at, at the appropriate okay. time. I'm waiting for, for more oh, okay. discussion. We have more discussion. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Um, we have two proposals on the table. I just want to. Want to want to ask you guys again what those are, Mr. Silvera? What was the proposal, sir? To approve the budget, resolution B, and on Exhibit A, scratch off the code enforcement officer, the two parks maintenance workers, and the reduced overtime budget for for police. That would 
bring our reserves to 27%, which would be at 30% if we were to leave the $500,000 savings in, from the fire contract in the budget. So I think it's a great trade off to add positions that are needed in our community and to avoid the police coming back in a few months and saying they need more money for overtime and still end up with 27% in reserve, which is 18% is widely recognized as what we need to be at. Vice Mayor, what was yours? Well, my, my first motion would be to put the 25%, $365,000 of the development agreement money that we have with marijuana companies into fixing PEPRA for our POA member. Um, that, that would be my first uh, item. Second item, uh, really a, a piggyback on Council Member Silvera's uh, item. Uh, I would suggest trading the code enforcement officers and parks maintenance workers for the street grid uh, pruning program. A comment more read into the street the grid pruning. You know that's a that's an ideal situation. I'm sure if we had a lot more money and revenue than we did, then that grid pruning system would be done every year. Um, I guess looking at that system to, to figure out if it's really needed every year. We've, we've taken it out before because we probably can. And I think in times like this would be a good place to start as opposed to positions that are, are necessary. Um, we talk about code enforcement every single meeting. We put more and more and more things on code enforcement. Literally, I had no idea how much code enforcement uh, their responsibilities were when I got elected. And it's, it's incredible how much we put on them and to eliminate one that we could potentially take care of a lot of those problems with, I think would be irresponsible. I just, I, I just think those things over the tree grid pruning program are far and above more important to our, our community. <clears throat> we're not sure if the grid pruning system is needed every year it if we don't do it every year if we've only do it, done it a few times in eight years maybe that's all that's needed mm -hmm. but these other things that we've mentioned that i've mentioned we definitely know we've met we need them council member Ryan, what are your thoughts on this well as you've all heard me say every year that we've even before you were all on the council my objective has always been to have a balanced budget that we don't spend more than we bring in. I can't do that at my own house and I, I certainly will not do it with the people's money. And while 30% may look really good for reserves, I think before we start hiring new employees that we need to take care of the ones that we have. We know we have negoti negotiations coming up we don't know what, if anything, we're going to spend, but to bring on new employees when we know we have negotiations with all of our bargaining units just doesn't seem to me to be the right thing to be doing at this time. So would your suggestion to be approve ex uh, resolution B and just leave the 500,000 in savings in the budget? Yeah, it would be. Vice Mayor. Before we do that, I do want to make a formal motion that we dedicate the $365,000 from marijuana development agreements to fixing, correcting the pepper issue uh, with our police officers. So you want to make that motion? Yes, sir. <clears throat> Second that motion. Thank you. Oh, Council Member Rhino? No. Council Member Silvera? No. Vice Mayor Condit? Aye. And Mayor Lopez? Aye. Due to motion fails.
Vice Mayor, are you willing to um, compromise on the pruning for now, even though I think we would all, I mean, at least I agree that it's important that we could possibly talk about that at a future meeting? About Pepper? No, no, I'm sorry, uh, pr the pruning. The pruning, yeah, I, I would be, but on that, I do wanna ask Director Domus another question. What's our backlog for the, the pruning? You said you had a few requests come in just over the weekend. Is there a backlog? And as Mr. Osgood stated, is there a liability if one of these trees damaged a home, damaged a car? So sure, there's, you know, there's liability every time a tree limb falls. You know, a tree limb's gonna fall on a car. I think that this weekend we took two tree limbs off of cars. A lot of that work staff does internally just because of the cost to keep the cost down. Uh, the backlog on the, the last time I saw the backlog to the contractor for West Coast to come in and do the tree work above and beyond what we can maintain, um, there was a hundred trees on that request list. Um, I think that the HR director may be better suited to answer the liability question. I don't know what the claims are coming in. So yes, we are self-insured to 25,000. So any liability that occurs from a fallen tree, uh, the city would absorb or it would get picked into our risk management authority. Thank you for clarification. Awesome, Moreno. But, but by grid pruning, it doesn't necessarily take care of a tree limb that may just be diseased and fall off, correct? There's, there's no guarantee when we have these limbs that fall because of a drought or whatever, that that tree would have been included in the grid pruning for this year. Is that correct? Correct. Okay. So by removing the grid pruning until maybe mid-year, that does not eliminate any emergency pruning that we would be doing, correct? Correct. Thank you. Well, we'll start with a motion. I'll move to approve resolution 2021-55B and use it on exhibit A to scratch off code enforcement, two parks maintenance workers, and the reduced overtime for the police. We would have. Take it. Get it. Can I get a roll call? Council member Rhino. Council member Silvera. Yes. Vice Mayor Condit. Nay. And, Ma and Mayor Lopez. Yes. Motion fails to two. I'll turn it back to Vice Mayor. Well, Mayor, uh, I would make a motion for resolution B as it is. Second. Get a roll call. Council Member Rhino. Yes. Council Member Silvera. Yes. Vice Mayor Condit. Aye. And Mayor Lopez. Aye. Motion passes 4 0. <clears throat> Moving on to new business. Excuse me, Mayor. Actually, Mayor, there's, 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 yeah, there's, there's a second resolution. resolution. Which one are we referring to? Uh, 2021-56. Oh, the appropriations limitations. My apologies. Move to approve 2021-56. Can I can I ask a question first? Wait a second. If we if we're moving on to this, we need to open that to the public or the limitations. Already talked about. We've already talked about it. Okay, just wanted to make sure. I just want to make sure we're on the same page. Brandon, you said you wanted to mention something. So oh, the the appropriations isn't necessarily. Can you explain appropriations to me, please? It's not actually the budget. Correct. That appropriation. But we're, but we're we based on state law or something have, as a city have to have an appropriations limit, correct? Right. And it has strictly to do with general fund revenues. 
that that appropriations limit states that we cannot spend general fund revenues over that amount and that's a calculated amount so thank right you. now our general fund revenues are 24 25 million dollars that we're spending thank you Any more questions about the council move to approve resolution 2021-56 second roll call please council member rhino yes council member silvera yes vice mayor condit aye and mayor lopez aye motion passes four zero thank you moving on to new business excuse me wasn't that a public hearing item 56 the separate line yes it was number. a public hearing item yes excuse me it was public hearing Arriva. well that's why i was asking the, the public hearing is both budget so you can include both yeah. resolution together. there's no difference there's no difference that we we had a public hearing on the budget the budget included both items you're free to and make I, and I did the motion the public hearing so that's why thank you sir moving on to new business re re uh, resolution number 2021-84 approving a second amendment to the Bernalotti series just Disposal financial agreement and authorizing the city manager to ex ex execute the agreement. <clears throat> Jeremy, I believe you have a report. Uh, short and sweet. Thank you, Mayor. After a two year period um, working with Cal Recycle, Bertolotti, city staff, uh, the last piece to the puzzle for the solid waste program is to amend uh, Bertolotti's current contract to update the the language for the organics can some of the recyclables and just a few of the um, some cleanup with that i'll take any questions council any members of the public that would like to speak on this matter that sounds good thank you yeah i scrolled through the packet i just didn't see a, a end date on the contract the original contract, so the language is, it's, eight, it's an eight-year term. Okay. We have to notice, if we are to put Bertolotti on notice that the contract's going to be rebid, we have to notice them prior to July 1st on an even year okay. for eight years. So my suggestion would be, like always, the next time this is uh, comes up for discussion, that we put it out to bid instead of continuing to give one person a franchise. You know, we need to look at uh, the best for the city, whether that's Bertolotti or Gilton or whoever else is around. Next time we address this contract issue, I think we should go out to bid. We should have actual dates. And we can review this in the packets. Thank you. Thank you. That sounds good. Council Member Reno? My understanding is that unless someone were to bring it up now, or if they were to bring it up now and want it to go to bid, it wouldn't go to bid for eight years. Is that correct? Correct. So the clock would start July 1st. And we would have to notice Bertolotti prior to July 1st of an even year for that eight year clock. Thank you. Is there anybody on Zoom? Any emails? <clears throat> Public comment is now closed. Questions from the council? No questions. I'll move to approve resolution 2021 84. Second. Your roll call, please. Council Member Rhino. Yes. Council Member Silvera. Yes. Vice Mayor Condit. Hey. And Mayor Lopez. Aye. Motion passes 3 1. <clears throat> There's no discussion items. Uh, council Member referrals. Anybody on the council would like to refer something? Vice Mayor. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, City Manager, I just wanted to make sure that. We do have uh, items coming back related to the fire contract, correct? With muni code changes, 
and to set up the which members of this council are going to be on the committee. I don't think that has been scheduled at this point in time. Well, I would like to refer uh, those items for a future meeting. Uh, our municipal code is in line with uh, the actions that we have taken, as well as we can appoint two members uh, to the committee. On a second item, uh, I would like to refer a contract audit to be discussed at a future council meeting. Is there a specific contract? Uh, the whole city. So a contract on it to get a third party in here to do a comprehensive uh, look at the city expenditures and revenues. We currently have an auditor come in every year for this DS. They're an outside audit company. We have an outside auditor come in once a year and audit our financials. Thank you. Are there uh, different types of audits that auditors can perform? Um, I'm sure there are. I don't, we have our annual financial audit. My point is, I think we need uh, an audit with a little more depth, uh, a little harder look at our finances and our reporting. Uh, especially with uh, our experienced city manager leaving and uh, someone coming in in the future that's new and hasn't been here, I think it would be best for uh, that person and uh, best for the new council members and uh, the future council member as well. So that's why I suggested it. When the auditors come in, don't they randomly pick out different things, whether it's a contract or... I'm trying to remember from back when I worked for the city, they they don't just focus on one thing. They just pull all kinds of different things out and they're here for a they couple are, weeks at least. They are here for um, one week uh, right after the end of the fiscal year and then one week closer to the end of the calendar year. And they do random testing of all of the different divisions, um, accounts payable, payroll, utilities, they look at our internal controls and then they um, report on our entire financials. And, and they don't give you a heads up. They just start picking things apart, correct? Correct. correct. And then they do a random list of stuff that they want to look at. And then as the council, when they're through and they do a report, we are given that report to look at, correct? Yes. And it's on the agenda. Yes. Thank you. I'm more than comfortable with the yearly audit. And as we go through the process of replacing our city manager, we can get that those reports over the last couple, three years to that person so they can come up to speed with where we sit financially over time. But a yearly audit is more than enough, in my opinion. And I would agree with Council Member Silvera. Having worked here and seen the process that different auditors have gone through. I'm comfortable with what they've done. Let's start off with reports. I have no reports, City Council. City Manager. I have nothing to report tonight, Mayor, and I do know that uh, Supervisor Condit's office, they are uh, had a conflict tonight, so they won't have a report either. Thank you. Nothing to report, Mayor. Thank you very much. Departments? Thank you very much. <clears throat> we'll now adjourn this meeting and go into closed session to discuss two items, one public employment city manager and two conference with the labor negotiator. The city attorney will return to report out. Thank you, everybody, for today.
Okay, I think we're good. Okay, on the two closed session items, the council gave directions. 